Hi! I'm making this video to tell you that this week I will not be making a video. Which you can tell because I'm telling you in this video that I'm making today to tell you that I will not be making a video. Uh, well, let me explain. The next logical video to make will be on oscillators. And the truth is, I have a little hard time wrapping my mind around many oscillating circuits. So I've been putting this off for quite some time. I need to be able to visualize a circuit before I really understand it, and I've had some trouble visualizing some oscillators. And if I can't visualize them, I can't really explain them that well, and then I'm going to give you just a textbook explanation like everyone else does. And I try to give explanations that are a little different from what you may have heard before, so I'm having trouble wrapping my mind around oscillators in such a way that I can make that kind of a presentation. So I've been looking into it, trying to look at oscillators, trying to figure them out, trying to visualize them, trying to make some explanations that are maybe better than you've heard before. So what do we know about oscillators? Well, they have to have positive feedback and a gain of one, and except they also have to have negative feedback too, so that gets it a little more complicated. And let's take a look. Let's see, a common emitter amplifier has a 180 degree phase shift, and so if we feed that back, that's going to be negative feedback. But what if we add another common emitter amplifier and feed the output of the first into that one? Well, that flips the phase again. And so if we feed that back, we have positive feedback. Shouldn't that make an oscillator? Well, I've never seen an oscillator like this before. So I did a quick duck, duck, go search because I don't use Google and came up with the A-stable multivibrator. Well, I'm certainly familiar with that one. And I looked it over and I said, oh yeah, you usually see it drawn like this, but this is the A-stable multivibrator just minus the capacitors. Will this oscillate? It probably would, but probably at a very high frequency and maybe such a high frequency that the transistors really couldn't respond, so it really wouldn't oscillate. But by putting these two timing capacitors in here, we increase the capacitance and thus lower the frequency it wants to oscillate at, and we get an oscillator. But this produces square waves. Is there a way to make an A-stable multivibrator produce sine waves? So I did another search, how to make an A-stable multivibrator produce sine waves, and came up bupkis. Okay, I'll make a search on a two-transistor sine wave generator. And came up with a question from Quora that said, why does a Veenbridge oscillator have two transistors? Oh. Well, I know the Veenbridge oscillator, you usually see that with an op amp, but I know they originally were made with vacuum tubes and then transistors. So let's take a look at that. And closely looking at the circuit, I see, ah, the Veenbridge oscillator is actually an A-stable multivibrator where we have added some negative feedback to stabilize the circuit so it's not saturating, so it won't produce the square waves. And to stabilize it at a certain frequency, we use a couple of filters. So we have a low pass filter and a high pass filter. We put them in the right arrangement so that they act as a narrow band pass filter and allow it to only oscillate at one frequency. So the Veenbridge oscillator is actually simply a modified A-stable multivibrator. So I'm learning some interesting things that I can convey in my video about oscillators. So I'm going to be taking a closer look at even more oscillators and trying to find better and better ways to explain them and to wrap my mind around it so I can explain it in a way that hopefully you can wrap your mind around them. So that's what I'm working on. It may even take more than one video because I may need a video for each oscillator or maybe related oscillators. So while I've got your attention, I just want to give you a big thank you because by the time you see this, I've probably got 14,000 subscribers to my channel. That's a huge increase over the last couple of weeks. I think I had about 5,000 two weeks ago, and so I've just about tripled my number of subscribers. A big thank you. And with more subscribers and more views per video, I'm missing out on a significant amount of revenue I could be making on this channel if I allowed advertisements on it. But I really like to avoid putting ads on this channel because they're so distracting and I'm trying to do a class here. I'm not trying to do popular videos. Maybe on my extras channel where I do address things that are not related directly to the class, but I'd like to avoid monetizing this one. Now that I've tripled the number of subscribers I have, that should increase the number of people who help me put these videos online and help keep Vocademy free by going to Patreon and pledging your support. So if you think my videos and my free online school are valuable, 
please consider going to Patreon and making a monthly pledge. Just $1 a month adds up with 15,000 subscribers. It wouldn't take a huge percentage of you to increase my revenue to a point where I can justify putting the work into this that I do put into it, which is quite a bit of work. I'm not only the presenter, I'm the writer. I also wrote the software and maintain the software that operates Vocademy. I maintain my own computers, which as you probably know, computers are throwing something at you every day. And if you'd like to help me justify the time I put into this, you can go to patreon.com slash Vocademy and pledge your support. Just $1 a month is a big help, but you can also pledge $3 a month and get a one day preview of my videos. For $5 a month, you'll have access to my Not Ready for Primetime works. I have a number of textbooks and other works that are in the process of being written and are not quite ready to be presented to the world, but you can see what I have, and along with a few other things that I have not yet made public. For $10 a month, you can have a link to the family-friendly website of your choice or your YouTube channel. And for $25 a month, you can have a company logo on the Hall of Patrons. And I'm always trying to find more ways to reward my patrons. I'm also going to add a $2 a month category, which I get a higher percentage of if you pledge at $2 a month. I haven't decided what to put there as a benefit yet, but I will put something at the $2 level to make it valuable to those who want to subscribe at that level. And of course, you can make a one-time contribution at paypal.me slash V-O-C-E-D. That's for Voke Ed. So I hope you're looking forward to my upcoming video series on oscillators, and I hope you find that valuable, and I hope that more of you will contribute at Patreon to help me put these videos online and to keep Vocademy free. So as always, a big thank you to my patrons and other donors who have made this possible. I couldn't do it without your help. And thanks for watching, and I look forward to starting to publish my series of videos on oscillators next week.